Welcome back. We are here. Less than 48 hours to go, and the candidates are crisscrossing a key battleground states today in that last minute push for voters. The Clinton campaign is holding 33 events in 11 states. Donald Trump himself holding six rallies in five important swing states. Let's bring in our panel now. Ed Rollins is the former campaign manager for the Reagan Bush ticket in 1984. He's the chief strategist for a Trump super PAC. Julie Roginski is here, a Democratic strategist and a Fox News contributor. And Mary Kissel with us on the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal. Good to see everybody. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining Thank us. Ed, two days out. How are you feeling? I, well, I feel, I feel confident. I mean, I think he's really turned this thing back around the last couple of weeks with a big assist from the FBI and in investigating. And I think at the end of the day, for a campaign that didn't do anything correct in the sense of uh, the organization <laughs> and, the, and, and against a campaign that did everything, it's a dead even race. Yeah, but I mean, is, does he have that ground game to actually come and bust people to the polls? I get, don't, I, he certainly, sure he certainly can't match her ground game, and you certainly can't in the, in the get out the voter. But I think there's a momentum that's turned to him the last two weeks that may, may overcome all that. There sure is. The critical, thing, the critical thing is Florida. You, you look at real clear politics, the toss-ups at basically 297, 241, she's ahead. Florida shifts, it's 270. Wow. So Florida's critical, Florida's really. Critical. Florida is critical to him. It's not necessarily critical to her. She could, there are pathways for her, multiple pathways where she can win without winning Florida, but uh, it is very critical to, to him. Um, I, I will say it's not just about the ground game, which is very important, but uh, uh, you also know what I'm talking about when I talk about modeling. She's modeled her voters. She knows exactly who that voter is. She knows exactly whom she needs to get to the polls. That's something Trump has not done, and I think to his own detriment, and something that the next Republican candidate really needs to make sure they get down before they... What do you mean the modeling? Tell us what they do with modeling, what they do is they essentially model somebody to make sure that Maria Bartiromo gets to the polls, but if you're a twin sister with the same exact characteristics and demographics that you have, based on about 1,200 to 1,400 criteria, may not be that voter. They don't have to focus on your twin sister, but they have to focus on you. It's a very specific mathematic hmm. um, way of identifying your voters, much more specific than polling, and that's something the Clinton campaign has done very effectively. Obama did that very effectively in 2008, 2012. The Trump campaign has not modeled, and I think to its own detriment. Well, he's been a one-man show for a right. long time. Yeah, he has been. Trump is essentially trying to break the mold. He's trying to get voters out to the polls through the social media, flying around the country and holding rallies uh, in, in airport hangars. I mean, Maria, he, he has to win uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida. It looks like he's, he's doing well in Ohio. Florida is very, very very close. Pennsylvania Clinton seems to have a lead. And he has to turn states that um, Mitt Romney lost. So he's, you know, looking to places in the Midwest like Michigan that went to Bernie Sanders that has a disaffected um, high school educated white vote out there. But really, you know, I think the key for him is he has to stay on message. He has to talk about Obamacare. He has to talk about jobs. has to talk about change. Uh, and he has to keep his, his thumb off the Twitter button, essentially. <laughs> yeah. just, just take it away from him, put him on a teleprompter. Uh, and, and we'll see where the chips fall. Two, th two things, two things that. have encouraged me. One is seeing the front page of the New York Times with him holding a baby. That's the traditional old politics, which he <laughs> hasn't done at all. And I think the drain the swamp, which I thought was kind of a silly thing at first, I think it's become a big issue. And I think it symbolizes what people think about Washington. Right. And I think it's worked well. Well, th this campaign and this entire election season was a lot about jobs and national security. It has become just as much about ending corruption. Right. Isn't that right? It has to some extent, look, but it also is about temperament and it's about who's fit to lead. And if you look at the polls that have come out over the last couple of days, that's where she's got the advantage over him. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to say I want to drain the swamp. You also have to say who's going to be draining the swamp for the next four years. Have a and, plan. And have a plan. And I think just based on temperament alone, she's got an edge. People understand this is going to be somebody who's going to be the commander in chief well, of the well, country. Well, she's been very shrill. And, and, and Ooh, I wouldn't use that word. I would use that word. <laughs> okay. She, she has been. And, and she's, a, she's a very articulate person. But I've watched a lot of these these uh, sessions, and she's she's very very shrill, and I think to a certain extent that that basically backfired. Well, it's shrill, but it's also um, there is an FBI investigation happening, and and what is that? I've been asking this question throughout the show this morning. What hap What does that mean for the day after, Mary? I mean, when when you when you know, let's say Hillary Clinton wins, what happens after that, knowing that we've got this investigation hanging it, over it, her? It means you're going to have ongoing investigations. Essentially, look, there's a reason why Donald Trump is seen as more honest and trustworthy today than Hillary Clinton. That's in large part due to these multiple FBI investigations. He has a lot of material to talk about here. And by the way, it's not just about the FBI. Um, you have reporters uh, like John Harwood, Donna. Brzee, 
Brazil, um, feeding questions to the Clinton campaign. You get the sense that the whole process was rigged. Yeah. And, and I don't say that lightly because, you know, look, our voting system works. The, our electoral process itself is not rigged. But when you look at how the Clintons have been packaged and sold to the American people, yeah. um, you know, they're selling a, a, a terrible product here. Donald Trump had run this campaign in a different way. He, he would be ahead 20 points by now. Yeah. Um, but well, you, look, you mentioned it, these emails. I mean, the WikiLeaks emails, the most recent one on John Harwood from CNBC, basically says to John Podesta, what should I ask Jeb Bush? Yeah. The media it's, uh, has not covered itself in glory in this campaign. And that's why it's so important for Trump to continue to press the message that he has a positive vision to motivate Republicans to come out. He's not getting even 90 percent of Republicans. He needs those Republicans to come home. Yeah. While at the same time suppressing the Clinton vote by continuing to emphasize just how incredibly corrupt this family actually is. Well, in the final few days of, a, of an election, Julie, isn't it the right path to actually make sure you're communicating to voters something to vote for, right? Instead of, I mean, she's chosen an approach to just trash Trump. Well, it's both, right? So you have, a lot, you have a lot of people who may not love her but are terrified of him. And I'll give you an example. You've got Latino voters lining up for hours to vote in Clark County, Nevada, or Broward County, Florida. The reason they're doing that is not because they're enamored with Hillary Clinton. They're doing that in reaction to Donald Trump and what he said about them over the last 15 months or so. Yeah. And when you talk about John Harwood or you talk about John Podesta or these emails, that's not what voters really care about. Mm. I agree. The media has not covered itself in glory here <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah. But that's not why these voters are lining up to vote early for hours. Yeah, that's a fair point. All right, let's take a short break. Then we want to ask who uh, 